This is Raven, and you're listening to the Interactive Interview. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the Interactive Interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Raven, Raven, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Doing real well. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, I've been a fan of yours for many years. As a matter of fact, the uh, first time I got a chance to see you was with the Global Wrestling Federation way back when. Um, how did you enjoy working with Global? It was cool. I mean, it was good at the time. I mean, it just didn't have enough money to you know, to run for any length of time. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of the young guys that uh, later went out to be superstars came from there, like uh, Buff Bagwell and, and such. Um uh, I don't know. I always thought that company had legs. Was that, and this is just me being a smart mark, just like trying to catch up on my knowledge here. Um, was that like associated with the USWA? No. Okay. Not at the time. Not originally, no. I think they ended up getting bought by them, but originally they weren't. Ah. Okay, cool. Um, what were your impressions of the Scotty Flamingo character in WCW? What do you mean? How did you enjoy that character? Was that was that who you are as a person, or well, were? Just, I mean, it was just an extension of my previous character, Scotty the Body, but which is just an aspect of my personality, the uh, the loud, flamboyant. It was more um, it was originally a sort of a a Michael Hayes kind of character, but uh, and then they put the flamingo in the end just to change the name because they wanted to you know own the rights to it. Right. And then, um, but then eventually I became Raven, which is you know really more who I am. Right. In uh, WCW, as Scotty Flamingo, you were managed by DDP. Uh, how did you get along with him then, and how do you get along with him now? Oh, we get along great. We're, we've been close friends for 20 years now. Mm. Um, what was behind your leaving World Championship Wrestling the first time around? They let me go the first time. Uh, was there any reasons given? or? No, just Watts came in and cleaned out, and uh, he just let me go. Mm. When you showed up in uh, the WWE, you were renamed Johnny Polo, and they didn't have you wrestle. Instead, they had you manage the Quebecers. Was there any reason why they had you used in a managerial role as opposed to a wrestler? Yeah, they said I was too small at the time. Hmm. Uh, and, and you did some announcing with uh, Gorilla Monsoon. That's back when 220 was small. Well, I was about 225 back then, and that's when oh. 225 was a small guy. Right. Yeah, 256 now, but, but, back, but now you know, get guys 140 pounds, but back then 225 was small. Yeah. Right, right. You did some announcing with uh, Gorilla Monsoon, and you hosted All American Wrestling. Uh, and later on in your career, you also did some announcing on Heat. Uh, when it's time to step out of the ring, do you think you'll ever consider becoming a full-time announcer? Yeah, probably. I could definitely consider it. Mm. A lot of the guys that uh, actually do that are like Jerry the King Lawler. So I think it'd be like you did a really good job with Gorilla. I remember you started singing some rock song with him. It was it was a fun show. I I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. But uh, yeah, we, we work really well together. Absolutely. Uh, of course, many of the people, as they know you now, is Raven. Um, you said that's part. That's pretty much who you are. But where did the idea for you to start calling yourself Raven and on all that? I mean, that's the stuff that interests me. Where, where did the idea come from? I can't, I can't help with the entire thing. Lock, mm. stock, and barrel. Just to just take off my own who I really was. Mm. Mm. Uh, Raven is synonymous with ECW. Is possibly the biggest star that ECW ever produced. What led you joining EC, what led you joining ECW? Um, actually I was uh was in developing the ECW album but he never did. And uh so I called in a favor and got into um ECW and then that led to that. Mm. Mm. And then one of ECW's most controversial angles of all time was when you were involved with the crucifixion of the Sandman. And later on in the show, you came out and apologized to the fans. Uh, can you tell us what was going on backstage and, and, and what led to the, the, the events that came to pass? Hang on a sec. Okay. Sure. I'm, doing a, I'm doing a radio interview. Hang on a sec. Give her my keys. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Uh, you were involved in one of ECW's most controversial angles of all time, which was the crucifixion of the Sandman, and later you came out to the fans and you apologized. Hey, hang, on, you hang, on, hang on, hang on a second. Okay. Hey, I got it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. And a after the event, you came out and you uh, apologized to the fans. Can you uh, tell us what was going on backstage and what led to the events that uh, had you come out and, and apologize to the fans? Yeah, pure idiocy. This is pure idiocy. Um, 
Kurt Angle, they were trying to hire him, and he was, uh, hmm. his religious sensibilities were, were threatened, so was Taz's. And uh, they felt because me and Paul Heyman were Jewish and Todd Gordon, that we were making a mockery of, of the uh, crucifixion, which had nothing to do with it, because obviously they didn't pay a lick of attention to what we were doing. We were just crucifying the Sandman as, as a martyr for society's sins. And uh, it didn't mock Christianity at all, but, you know, of course, people, uh, people are very narrow-minded, and they only hmm. see what they want to see. Hmm. And so I was forced to make a, a very insincere apology about it. So I take it that it wasn't from the heart then? No, not at all. It was idiotic. Hmm. It was the right kind of heat. All he knew after he made me go out there that it was a mistake. Because uh, the, people, the people responded exactly the way they should have. And for a rebel promotion to go back and say, we apologize, it's not what they want to hear. Right. They want you to break the rules. They want you to challenge their, uh, their thoughts and feelings. And, and, uh, and they don't want to, you know, and even if you step over the line, they don't want you apologizing for it. That's what you're supposed to do when you're the rebel. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was one of the uh, big, one of the biggest mistakes they ever made was having me go out and apologize. Yeah, that would have been like having Steve Austin brush dust off Vince McMahon's shoulder. Yeah. And uh, one of my um, favorite ECW angles was you stealing uh, Laurie Fullington and uh, Tyler Fullington, the Sandman's son, from him. Do you have any memories of that angle? Yeah, the kid was tremendous. What a professional he was. He was only like 13, I think, at the time, but he, he was great. He had never <laughs> missed a cue. He's done a really great job. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, would you like to take the next one, Eric? Yeah, take it. Okay. Uh, I remember you saying in a in a promo several times in uh, ECW, especially when you were world champion, you were off for a little while, that you were in rehab. Uh, would you like to say if this was a shoot, or was that part of the, the gimmick? Or? Yeah, no, I went, to, I went to rehab. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, a lot of guests we've had come on here that uh, do such things as uh, magazines or promote games have talked about how one of their favorite feuds of all time was Raven versus Dreamer. And a lot of people echo this sentiment. Do you have any memories and no. any thoughts on your feud with Dreamer? Like who? Uh, Adam Ryland actually just said that it was his favorite feud of all time. Who did? Adam Ryland. He he programs the uh, the uh, wrestling spirit and the Total Extreme Warfare video games. Um, all right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. It was just it was just, it was just between me and Paul and uh, Tommy. We just we put together a brilliant program. You know, it was just uh. It was clever, it was innovative, it was ahead of its time, and I'd stack it up against any angle that anybody's ever done, just hmm. for the length and breadth of it. Hmm. When, you joined World Cha when you joined World Championship Wrestling, you were a part of the flock. You were actually the, obviously, obviously the head of the flock. Uh, they never seemed to let you guys reach the height of the NWO. Do you feel that anybody he held you down? Yeah, I know they did. They did it intentionally. Hmm. Hmm. We're intentionally held down, but that's the way the business is, you know. Wasn't my turn, unfortunately. Hmm. Should have been, but it wasn't. Hmm. Uh, who held you down in particular? The writers. Right. Uh, you obviously were one of the ones who dropped the belt. You dropped the U.S. belt to Goldberg. Do you feel WCW dropped the ball with Goldberg? I don't know. I mean, I didn't uh, stick around. Just a long ago, I don't remember. Right. Not, not in the beginning, they certainly didn't. I mean, fuck, they turned him into a machine. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm sure at some point, I mean, you know, you can't, when they try to turn a heel, that was idiotic, but I didn't even watch it at that point then, so, you know. Right. Yeah. They teased a feud with uh, you and Piper in 99. Uh, why didn't that happen? It just didn't happen. Just, uh, I don't know. I have no idea, but it just didn't. Hmm. Hmm. And in 1999... Uh, you seem to have a reduced role in WCW. Uh, we, we really saw less of you in, in the... Well, that's why the, I quit. That's why I quit. Right. Yeah. Listen, wait, sorry. I, I really can't talk much longer. My battery's about to die. But okay, well, let's just uh, jump right into the current stuff and ask you, you have a pay-per-view match on Sunday evening, Destination X with Dustin Rhodes. Uh, That's going to be good, I think. I think it's going to be a match, a really, really good match. I love working with Dustin. He's a naturally flows. I mean, his, he's so graceful in the ring. I mean, it's just really a hell of a talent, and uh, I, I think it's going to be a hell of a match. Mm, absolutely. How are you enjoying your time in TNA at this point? I like it. I like it a lot. Mm. Very happy there. Uh, do you think it was it was a different move when you guys uh, stopped doing the weekly pay-per-views and you went to the Impact Zone? Do you think that the uh, the changes turned out to be positive or negative? Absolutely, it's a huge positive. Mm. Monster is positive. All right. Before we let you go, can we just give you a couple word associations? Sure. Uh, if you have a one-word answer, that's fine. If you have a little story that you want to share, that's also cool. Um, how about Brian Gerwitz? An idiot. Hmm. How about uh, a 
big friend of the show, Missy Hyatt. Missy's cool. I like Missy. Mm. How about Paul Heyman? Who? Paul Heyman. He's a genius. Absolute genius. Mm. How about uh, somebody from the Portland Territory, Art Bar? I really liked Art. I mean, uh, me and Art clashed on a lot of stuff, but... Uh, he claims, I mean, you know, he's told me, of course, you know, Art, you know, for what it's worth, I mean, Art, Art was a notorious liar, but, um, you know, I mean, I, and I love the guy, that's, I'm not trying to speak ill of the dead, but he was, but for what it's worth, I mean, he said his Love Machine character was based on Sky to Body, so mm. that's as big a compliment as it gets. Mm-hmm. How about Eric Bischoff? I like Eric. I get, along, I get along really well with Eric. I never had a problem with Eric. Mm. Uh, two last names for you, and then we'll let you go. We appreciate your time. First, I just want to say that. Uh, Jim Ross. I like Jim Ross. Jim Ross is a bright guy. I think he's one of the greatest commentators, if not the greatest commentator ever. And, uh, you know, he took care of me, so, I mean, I got no complaints. And the final name, you could probably guess what it's going to be, Vince McMahon. Um, Vince is an interesting character. He's a devoted family man, yet he's ruthless in business. Um, you know... I don't think he ever saw me as a talent. I, I, he, he definitely saw me as a creative talent, like because he's offered me a job as a writer. Definitely saw me as a brilliant commentator because he's offered me jobs as that. And for some reason, for whatever reason, whether it's people in his ear or whatever, he just didn't see me as a talent in the ring. So I mean, just which I'll never get. But hey, that's the business. What you can do about it? It's his company. Look, it's his company. He can do what he wants with it. Hmm. Any regrets? Oh, there's always regrets. Anybody who doesn't say how to say they have any is crazy, but uh, you know. But I'm kind of quite happy the way everything turned out, though. That doesn't mean I don't have regrets. Okay. Well, we can't thank you enough for your time, and we'll let you go join your party. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Stay tuned okay. for more of the interaction. Hey, this is Jackie from TNA, and you're listening to 1260 AM The Blaze. Also featured on KASC, The Blaze, 1260. Which um, I was not on. Which you were not on. Not my fault. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. I kept pointing... I've had a bad day. My internet, for the past four hours, and everyone else in the, in the, in the uh, college has been messed up. My phone, as you have experienced, is constantly messing up since it's connected to the phone line. Uh, yeah, just not, I'm kind of pissed off right now. Well, then that sounds to me like it's recap time. It is recap time. I'm sort of in a weird mood, and for whatever reason, I decided to start talking like a mixture of Lanny Poffo and the guy who plays Chef on South Park. Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes, who does smooth jazz. Hey, baby. Hey, children. How's it going? <laughs> How sing, are you? sing, sing, chocolate salty balls. I don't know that song. Anyway, um, <laughs> recap. Uh, I did not enjoy Raven's interview. Did not enjoy it all that much myself. It was not bad per se, but it was not uh, what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, I expected, and as I posted on the forums, you'll be proud of me, James. I posted on the forums before my internet when that went to hell and back. Uh, where did you post it? On the uh, Raven questions, I guess. Or okay. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it was not enjoyable for me. I think the less said about it, the better. Let's, uh, let's just sum it up. Let's sum it up like this. You guys know what we do as a show. We do somewhat long interviews where we ask a lot of questions, and usually the guest is surprised by what we ask, but the, at the same rate, after we hang up, a lot of them say that they enjoyed it because it's different. We're not like the other shows. When Raven called, he was talking about the radio interview, and I think he was thinking about us as show a show like a morning show where you have the DJs like, Hey, yellow phone right now. We're joined by Raven. How you doing, man? Something yeah. like that. Well, whatever the reason, he didn't seem into any of the questions. He didn't. See, I mean, the thing is... What we played on the radio was probably the best portions of it. Yeah, with you dubbing over the fact that I was cut off like eight times in the crucifixion. I had no other choice. Yeah, if you hear the actual interview online... In the one and you time, will hear it. I'm going to play it in its entirety so everybody knows it's not our fault that it was that short. Yeah, um, 
just check it out for sheer morbid curiosity. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing the recap of now, so you probably already heard it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I've always wanted to interview Raven because I think he's one of the more interesting personalities, and I'm a fan of his. Uh, but it's it, it, it was not something. Uh, but, Gee, it was just really disappointing for me as someone who thought, because I know how smart Raven is, I thought he was going to give us really great in-depth stuff, but we, we got more of the answers like, how'd you enjoy the Scottish Flamingo character? What? What do you mean? I thought he was going to say, well, it was a lame you know, or something like that, but, you know, he's like, well, it's kind of my personality, and he, he just didn't seem involved in the question. Um, I think had we had Raven sitting down in front of us, and we were talking to him on the level, he would have liked it. I think the fact that, that he was expecting the, hey, we're, uh, we're back on rock radio, and we're joined by Raven, how you doing? You know, doing that impression. Well, uh, where are the boys behind the noise? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, something glam-ass like that. I think that's what he was expecting, and when we were asking real wrestling questions, he was thinking to himself, number one, this was not what I was prepared for, and number two... I kind of wanted to get this bang, bang this out of the way because obviously I'm at a party and I think that was clear, and it just wasn't uh, it wasn't the right form. It wasn't the right right form for him to answer our questions, and I think he more was into the TNA discussion, which to be fair was what he was, you know, told to talk about. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, Lenny Poffo, I was not there. Not my choice. I would have loved to be there. Uh, had a prior engagement I, that I could not miss. Um, I was not out drinking or playing poker. It was something imperative. So I really wanted. You were to in transit. Let's just be honest. You were in tra transit. Yeah. Um, and you probably could have if you really, really, absolutely had to, but you wouldn't have been able to pay attention. And for the same reason that Raven wasn't really involved in the interview, you didn't want to like not be involved in the, in in this interview, asking questions, because you would have yeah, been preoccupied. I, I, and I know how, especially out there with the Raven interview, I know how important it is to have a partner out there that you can trust and that can have your back out there. So I would never intentionally leave you out there to dry because. Uh, pretty much when we're out there, you have my back and I have yours, and we're able to catch and save ourselves, and we have a pretty good ebb and flow. Um, so, you know, I would obviously never leave you out to dry. So when I do miss these interviews like Nikolai um, and Lanny, I, I'm, I'm trying not to make it a habit, and I don't think it'll happen too much in the future. Um, but, you know, it's just something that... I'll tell you this much. Of all the partners I've had, you definitely have proven yourself to be the most reliable. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I've had about three partners, excluding Chuck, so... Excluding Chuck, who, yeah, I didn't get on the radio today. I, we tried having you on. I stood outside in 40 degree weather with my cell phone and called numerous times and they couldn't get me on. Here's the situation on that, and since you guys know that I'm a pretty straight shooter, I'll just tell you flat out what happened. We're on the air. And we had a guy sitting behind me. He was a big wrestling fan. He's a good guy, funny guy. We took, we had some pretty funny um, conversations in between while, while the interviews were playing and such. Just chatting. He's a fun guy. I might actually invite him to come on the air at some point. Is this Chuck? No, this is somebody that uh, I don't want to say his name. I want to say it's Bradley or Brandon or something like that. Yeah. But he's one of the guys that when I was doing my training, they sent me to speak with and show the board to that time. So. Okay. So he's one of the guys that kind of trained me a little bit. Anyway, uh, Chuck's job initially, as I w understood it, was going to be on-air personality, and he was also going to, in addition, do the production work, in that he would run the board, and if we got any callers, he'd put them on the air. Well, they got a new phone system there, and the new phone system seems to have him a little bit perplexed at times, and he needs a good... 30 seconds to a minute to set it up. Um, that's tough to do when you're talking. Uh, so the, my suggestion was, and I said this in the production meeting that we had on Monday, how about Eric calls in, we leave him on the line, he listens in, and since you don't want him on the whole segment, we can, after we're done with our banter, we can have five minutes, you know, at the end and say, okay, our, we're being joined now by Roy analyst Eric Clancy. Uh, where are we wrong? And let's let you come in and talk, and we can banter for a good five or so minutes or ten minutes, and then that'll be it. 
You know, in wrestling terms, I'm getting pushed down the card. <laughs> yeah, not my choice again. I know, I know, I know it's not your choice. But I thought that would be the best way to do it, and I thought that because I knew Chuck needed a good amount of time to get to get the phone situation right. Uh, they didn't like that idea because it'd be tying up the phone. Not that it's ringing off the hook anyway. Uh, last week we didn't we didn't promote the phone. Today, this week we did, but we didn't we didn't do it in a that prominent way. That went by so quickly. What? The number that they said, I had no idea what it was. Right, and I got a, I got an email and a couple of messages on the forums requesting that I post it on the website so people know. Uh, only the only thing I'm scared about is that is that people will be calling to ask wrestling questions and it's going to be some guy doing a smooth jazz show, and he's going to be perplexed. Hey, children, what's going on? You pick. That'd be weird if you called somebody and they picked up the phone and said, "Hello, children." Uh, let's get to R A W. R-A-W, which is really awful wrestling. No, just kidding. Uh, uh, no, I, I just thought it out of the cuff. I don't know he's smart. <laughs> nice. Um, Actually, Rob yeah, was... I, I wasn't as impressed with it as I was last week. To tell you the truth, and I'm going to start off with this, I don't know how long, and I said this, I was talking to James and I was talking to Chris Yandick on the phone last night when Raw was on. Who, somebody started a poll on the forums. Did you see it? No. Somebody um, started a poll on the forums to ban Yandick from ever coming back on the show. Really? Yes, and I was like, why? Why, why is that? <sighs> Not my words. Sorry, Chris, if you're listening. They said something along the lines of, he sounds really gay. And I thought, what the hell? That's the most ironic thing I've ever heard. It is, and Chris is a good friend of the show, and even if the vote goes his in his favor... I am still going to invite him on whenever he yeah. wants to come on. I mean, he's he's a good friend of the show. He, you got to understand. Well, and I say this with the utmost respect, and Chris, Chris and I, he he knows I'm joking around, but in all seriousness, uh, Chris is a tremendous help to the show. He's, he's tremendous in helping us with the contacts. He helps a lot of stuff going on behind. I mean, I. He, I mean, he gives us advice going in, and yeah. I mean, he's he's. To be quite frank, he's been there and done a lot of it, and he's not really that involved in wrestling anymore, but he does, I think, deep down, he still has an interest in it, even I, I if you want to admit it. Too. I, I, I think it's... I, I'm not going to sit here and psychoanalyze him, because, you know, but the thing is, it, we'll, we'll have Chris on again. Not, not re I mean, if you guys don't... In, it's. I mean, I, I, once again, I don't want to go against against our fans, but... It's, you know, it's, it's something. I will. We really, we I'll go against the fans. Elimination Chamber match. We'll get and then I'll win the title. I'll win the title again, even though I've never really lost it. Yeah. You know, I, I think he did that, not uh, because he wanted to be the first champion to win the title, uh, WWE title in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Um, By the way... Yeah. Just a random thing, and, and uh, I can't really get into this in, in too much depth, but if you're an active wrestler currently, or at least are uh, working in Puerto Rico, uh, use Samu as an example, and don't buy steroids there. What happened? Uh, uh, Alright, I'll just explain it real quick. Samu bought steroids in Puerto Rico. Uh, he bought three vials. Uh, one vial actually was steroids. Two vials were poison. And if you want to know why he was having benefit shows, because he had tumors in his lips and, and kidney area because he was stabbing himself in the ass with poison. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, don't buy stuff there. Uh, let's get back to Raw. Um, main event, Batista versus Flair. I said this to Chris and James last night. I don't know how long I can take this these Batista Triple H stare downs. Let me ask you this. They are so monotonous to me. I'm sorry. I'm going to give this guy this this props, okay? Uh, whatever the other guy's name was that was at, back at the show and was standing behind me, he made a funny and interesting point after the show where he said, well, great, Batista's got a taunt now. And he did that pointing downward thing. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I've seen that once, and it was cool the first time he did it because you thought of Randy Orton. Yeah. It's not a weekly thing. Push down the card, but go ahead. And you don't have to make it a weekly thing. You know, you don't have to do it every time you're out there. It's not a cool taunt. It's not the diamond cutter. It's not Raven's uh, whatever you want to call it. I think they call it... Dissing us in the interview? No. <laughs> it's not wing spread or whatever the hell you call it, what he does. Yeah. 
Um, I just... It's not catchy. I cannot get excited about this main event. Well, I, yeah, Batista is ripped, and... You're, I, you're, you're uh, more critical of it than I am. I think it's it's working out fairly well, but I think that they probably... I mean, the crowd enjoys it, I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I personally do not enjoy this main event. Um, How dare you? Um, the thing is, I... Yes, I'm in my my I'm emotionally involved. <laughs> this is gonna sound totally wrong. Uh, the character of Triple H has been they they put enough investment for me to be. Involved. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone with us, Stephanie McMahon. Oh, I wish. Hey, Steph. Mm. Divorce. No. Um, I can I, talk like him too. But, you know, uh, I, I I'm interested in, in that <laughs> character. I I'm you know, Edge had a lot of investment put into his character. So did uh, Randy Orton. Batista, they... Edge is put in a lot of things, a lot of places. We're going we're gonna to disregard that just for the heck of it. Um, <laughs> uh, well, now I'm off track. I, I don't... I, I honestly do not care about this match because I, in the back of my mind, I know... And because and uh, once again, I hold nothing against Triple H as an athlete because I think he's one of the best wrestler in the game right now, no pun intended. The game? But, but the thing is, I get the feeling, and it, it's just an pit in my stomach. You know, I, I see by June the guy will have the title back again, and that's, I really think we need a change. I really do. As Owen Hart would say, enough is enough. And it's, it's time, time for a change. change. Uh, it's time to turn Orton heel. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I was starting to say anything, it's, so. Uh, the thing, the problem with this booking team, and you and I have been over this a thousand times, they butcher, you know, Randy Orton, it is not his fault for with the mega push that that he did not get extremely over with that. Granted, he is still very over, but he, he didn't get the reaction they were looking for for the simple reason. The people cheered him in the, in the la later parts of the summer because he was a cocky, legend killer, rock type character. And he was he was arrogant, and he was you know, and he 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 revered nothing. They like that. They don't like this. Oh, I respect you. Blah blah blah. I mean, no nobody buys that after seeing what he what he did in Evolution, and and his character shouldn't be the one who's like, I want my title back and my pride back from Triple H. He should have never. This is the guy who should foil Triple H at every turn, and Triple H is like, this guy's younger than me. He's better looking than me. Blah blah blah. Get, he frustrates Triple H until Triple H explodes. He's got to be the guy who's got everything going for him, and you know, you know, kind of like they did with the Rock character a while ago. This character is being so badly handled by this idiotic writing team that, you know, and then they expect him to be cheered at WrestleMania against Undertaker? I I don't see it. I mean, go ahead with your thoughts on this, James, but... Did you listen to the show? The live show, that is. Your show? Yes. Well, I was walking up to my room after uh, the, after my fingers were getting unnumbed, uh, so I didn't hear the raw chats. <laughs> Well, on that, I said something along the lines of many people are saying that Randy Orton was, was leveled with booze, and I didn't hear that. I think I heard a confused crowd thinking, well, he's going to fight The Undertaker. What are we going to do? Now, I also made the point that him RKOing Bischoff didn't really make sense cause neutral move. because Bischoff's not a heel, and Chuck both agreed and disagreed with me on that, saying that he thinks he got a good reaction but he thinks Bischoff is a tweener. Now, I don't think it really did all that much because if he's going to be a heel now, or if he's going to be a face and he's going to go against the legends, you know, if, if he RKO'd Bischoff just because he's a legend, so to speak, Yeah. Uh, why was he kissing up to Billy Graham last, last week who's a legend? Because nothing makes sense in this damn federation. I mean, and then, well, I w wouldn't go that far. What I will say is this. If he's going to kiss up to Billy Graham like he did last week, and as I just said, and he, then he's going to RKO Bischoff because he's a legend. Then he's going to be at the Hall of Fame banquet inducting his father, which was confirmed this week. Is he going to go nuts at the Hall of Fame banquet and RKO everybody there? If WWE has its way, yes. He should do that, and that would bring back his, you know, legend killer thing. But if he's surrounded by legends and doesn't do anything, then that just... I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense because... So I, I thought the Bischoff thing was just... 
he is really an idiot. Who is? Gerwitz. I mean... Well, even said he was an idiot. Yeah, I, and I agree with him. I'm trying to be as positive as, as I can, but the booking is... I mean, nothing against these wrestlers. They're doing a fantastic job, but the booking is just so bad lately. I mean, as far as the way they're handling some people. Hmm. And, I mean... This WrestleMania is, I mean, there is so many things, I mean, once again, Big Show versus Ake Bono. Ake Boner, as I call him. Yeah. I, Nothing like seeing a three, a 400-pound fat man in a thong. Yeah, and he'll be fighting the Big Show, and we'll, we'll all... And I have a funny feeling they're going to make that a sumo wrestling match. I have a funny feeling no one's going to care. That's a great bathroom break match. I mean, just, as I said, I suggested this a while ago, and I said... And here's another problem with it. Well, usually when they bring a superstar in, they beat up the bad guy. Big Show's the good guy. Yeah. So, what's the crowd going to do? Yeah. Uh, I suggested, since Big Show has been feuding with JBL, and the cabinet has always, one way or another, cost Big Show the belt... He go after Jordan for the U.S. title again, since there's really nothing for Jordan right now, and... I have a funny feeling the U.S. belt won't even be on the show. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's sad. And what you could have is you can have, like, Orlando Jordan, he'd be like, you know what, you're the problem, and I'm going to rectify this problem. And Jordan can be like, you know, he can win the match by hitting Big Show with the belt, and you can extend the feud, eventually getting Jordan over even more with a win over the Big Show. But it's useless. Once again, there's so many things that they missed out on this year. Uh, I, I was telling you about uh, earlier how I always had my um, my fantasy WrestleMania card in, in around December, and I had Orton and Edge in the main event. I had Triple H and Flair, which was to be, be built up slowly. And it would be Flair's last match. Flair's ma last match. It would have been a retirement match if Flair lost, and of course he would, but he would have gone out on top. And the fans would have had, uh, uh, they, they want to like him. So and and they also want to see him in a five-star match to send him off, even though scholars can debate if he ever had a five-star match in his prime. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, they want to send him off with that, and, and he certainly is not going to do that, get beat by everybody. Uh, even if he gets beat by Triple H, I think Triple H, since he worked with Shawn Michaels, and I'm going to keep going back to that. When he was a pirate. When he, yeah, when he had a hurt leg and peg leg. Um... He made it. He made that a really good match at Taboo Tuesday. I think Triple H can have a good match with the sledgehammer, and and make it believable. Yeah, I I, w I would have to agree with that. Uh, you could have had something with Batista. You know, you know, maybe, maybe even bring uh, Stone Cold or something for Batista. Something, and then have Batista built up even slower because, yeah, he was built up slowly. But the fact is, this was a guy that was getting beat by Jericho. Uh, at Vengeance in July. Um, and Who it was, was it that used to sing the song La Bamba? I don't know. Um, ba 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 Batista. I think they dropped the ball on, I told you of what my idea was, Muhammad Hassan and Khosra Davari versus Slaughter and Hogan in a tag match. He's six feet eight, he'll beat you up. ba 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 ba, -ba Batista. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, random random idiocy had to come in there. Obviously, they're going to have something with Hogan and uh, Hassan at, at the pay-per-view. I think they it would have been better if built up this way, but, you know, that's just me. I felt they could have had a match between uh, Cena and JBL, I predicted, and I, I thought it would be a good idea. Um, you know, I, I thought Jordan, I mean, I, I didn't think that until later, but Jordan and Big Show would have been a nice thing. Uh, Christian and Benoit, I thought, would have been nice to uh, provide Christian with it. But a, now they're just stuck in a pointless in match. A six way ladder match. Well, it's not that pointless because it's got the world title shot that somebody, like you said, would probably waste on Raw. But, I mean, it's, it's a nice concept, but it, it, just, it just shows how desperate the bookers are to get these guys involved. And I will give Chuck credit. I disagree with some of the stuff he was saying on the live show, but he did say that. Watch, they'll probably have Jericho win it, and they'll probably waste it. Yeah, he well, like like they always do. They always seem to screw Jericho out of any any chance of main event glory because they. And that's what he said. Why don't they give him a chance to shine again? And, I, and we went through the 2002 title reign, which was yeah, not his fault. Times. Right. Yeah, which was not his like, fault. It's like Randy's main event run. It was not his fault that things didn't turn out just peachy. It was the fact that. Uh, he well, that Randy's run wasn't as bad as. 
Don't touch no. my puppy. No, yeah, yeah. Triple H was, was playing second fiddle to a puppy in Stephanie McMahon. So Triple H could have, I mean, it, that, that, was, that was disastrous. It was absolutely disrespectful to Jericho, who I admire. Um, that, was, that was terrible. That was a terrible way to handle I mean, I understand if you're, he's going to lose to Jericho, but at least there were so many things they could have done. Jericho was the guy who they could have used, you know, he put Triple H out by putting him in the walls of Jericho on the table where he tore his, I mean, I know he didn't tear his quad there, but they could have played it up. And Triple H could have been like, you put me out of action for of what I like doing for nine months. And, and they didn't do anything like that. That was so that was so pathetic. And, you know, everybody can say, yeah, I came after Rock Hogan. And, yeah, I'm sure the, the crowd saw what they wanted to see in that match. But let's face it, mm-hmm. if that match had been booked better, I'm sure the crowd would have would have uh, cared a, a lot more if, if that had better booking going into it. Ba-da-da-ba-ba-ba-tista. Ba, 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 Stop that. I'm in such an annoyed mood today. I guess you can tell with all my negative stuff. On a positive note, uh, Destination X looks okay. I don't know why I said on a positive note. There's more of a neutral note. Destination X looks okay. Nothing spectacular. I have a funny feeling uh, Paige is walking out with the belt. Why? Why do you think that? You know something. I have a funny feeling Paige is walking out with the belt. Tell me what you know. Ba 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 Batista. Batista's interfering. Yes, and he's going to sing that song. No, seriously, what, what do you know? Ba 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 Batista. No, I'm six on. foot eight. I'll beat you up. Ba 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 Batista. No, come on. Why do you think he's going to walk out? <laughs> come on. <laughs> Let's just say I heard things and leave it at that. No. Um, let's just say I I know an indie, I know an indie wrestler, and they've been saying that GDP was going to win the belt since January. So, huh. and I have a feeling I, it's going to be. So I'm sticking with Jarrett. Okay, well, hopefully you're right. I think it would be a better idea to keep it on Jarrett and wait until I that and wait until Monty maybe is built up far enough. Yeah, and hopefully maybe they'll have a deal on FX. I, I think the thing with Jarrett is. This isn't a case of a guy being a mark for the belt. This is a case of the guy, the only guy who is not guaranteed to jump. Right. That's why he's holding it for so long. It makes sense to have him be the champion. At the same rate, he does have to lose. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just think... But he's the safest bet, and I think Paige still has value to WWE if he proves that he can work, and he has. Yeah. Um, so when his contract with TNA is up, which is probably almost probably only a six or six month to a year contract, yeah. uh, I would not be surprised if WWE gave him a call. I mean, I'm not sure. If, like, Randy, you stole my finisher, and he's like, "You're a legend. I respect you." And then yeah, like, and not only will he do that, not only will he do that, but he'll also stake stalk Stacy. He will stalk Stacy. Just for no evident reason. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was such a bad angle. Eric is in, like, Mr. Bad Mood tonight. This sucked. That sucked. This was all terrible. <laughs> I, am, I am in a bad mood. I'm in a... Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in a good mood tonight, I'll tell you that. Uh, anyway, I think Destination X does look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> there's so many gimmick matches, though. I they think. have to stop that. They do. Um... You know, it, it's it's getting to the point where it's like every match is a gimmick match. It's I'm going to be at WrestleMania as the musical guest. Speaking of musical guests, are we going to have 68, 68 guns on? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, to be honest with you, I've had arg- discussions at best with with the net with the station about that and it looks like it might happen, but I I still have to talk to them some more. Live music? What is this you speak of? Will it be about wrestling? Was was the remark? And I was thinking, no, it'll be about fun. Rock and roll. A little bit of rock and roll in your soul. Maybe what we were thinking I might do is I might have them come on and play a set, and it might be like the bridge in between us and the metal show, which is not really our style of metal, but it is metal. Uh, they could come in and play, and that could be like the bridge into the metal show. You know. Awesome. Yeah. And then, I, heard, I heard the guy before you, he was like, and here's some great local bands um, from their new album. So that was the guy before you. He was like local indie player guy. Yeah, they played horrible music. Sorry, guys, I just don't like the music on that station. And that's because there's no, there's no 
movement to it. There's nothing, you know, or what do you call it? It's nothing. It's just there. You gotta, you gotta create some kind of identity. Yeah. I mean, the, um, we're, we're in between the last movement and whatever will be the next movement, and no, it, we're not. We're in the mall punk era right now. Yeah, but mall punk sucks, and nobody listens to it except for hey. idiots. Yeah, p- people listen to it, and let's face it; otherwise, it wouldn't be all over. I mean, the. Co- Things, I mean, I don't like it, but I mean, you know, Good Charlotte, Simple Plan, all that crap, that's popular right now. Good Charlotte is mall punk? Yeah. I don't even know who they are, I've just heard it's the name. Essentially, it's essentially like pop punk type stuff. I mean, it's not really punk, it's just like whiny, really mainstream type punk. I bought her a milkshake and she yeah. spit it out. Boo hoo. It's that. Uh, you know, that that took over from the rap core, uh, the rap rock in 2003, which took over for grunge in 97 which took over from hair metal in 91, which took over from New Wave, and I don't know, and then I don't know what comes before that. But I, I think hair metal was most of the 80s. I think you could I argue... Knew it, was there, it was there beforehand, but no, it's all there pretty much the same time. I would say uh, it was eight, it 83 to 91, but yes, sir. Cares. Um, uh, what else to talk about? Uh, more raw stuff, I guess. Uh, it looks like they might give me my angle. What angle was that? I will have a match at WrestleMania. Brother. Oh, yeah. That's, what, that's what Buck Woodward, Woodward said today on his uh, uh, thoughts on Raw. Well, it, I mean, it would, be a, it would make sense. The crowd wants to see Hogan in there. And tell me if they kept it as a mystery. And they said, okay, who's his mystery opponent going to be? And here's the big anti-American in the ring. And it, all of a sudden you hear, dun, 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 and you see him come out with... You would piss your pants. If he came out with the American flag, you, you know how nuts that crowd would go? Even though it's in Hollywood, Finally. even no, though... Even though it's in Hollywood and those people hate America... Don't say it. Uh, yeah, I said it. Uh, even though, they I mean, don't. that crowd would go insane. You know it. I mean, that crowd would just be... First of all, it's Hollywood Hulk Hogan. So the crowd is going to go nuts for him anyway. Because it's in Hollywood, obviously, and even though he's probably from Hollywood, Florida, but but but, but it would balance out the American flag because Hollywood hates America. Yeah. <laughs> shut up. Uh, anyway, um, I yeah, think Meryl Streep should shut up. That's my opinion. What did she say? Nothing, but she never shuts up. I mean, I'm not even necessarily talking about politics. I'm just talking about an in interview. She never shuts up. Well, in interviews, James, people should keep their mouth shut. Well, Raven certainly proved that to be true. <laughs> you are making no sense tonight. Uh, but you've cheered me up a little bit. Um, so, <laughs> uh, by the way, ru- your He's rumor was six wrong. Days, James he'll be apparently heard a rumor that Yandick was going to get a show on PW Insider, which is not true. Twinsider. Twinsider. Uh, I would like a show on Twinsider if you're listening, Dave. Listen, Dave. Uh, but... Um, yeah, that's not true, apparently. Apparently it's just a suggestion. Just a suggestion, and it sounds like he might have even rejected the suggestion. Yeah. So, and I'm going to be a musical guest at WrestleMania, and I'm going to sing the Three's Company theme, and I'm going to sing Batista to the ring. Do you remember my little Batista theme yesterday? Do you remember mine? Ba 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 Batista. He's six foot eight, he'll beat you up. Ba 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 Batista. I don't know. I don't think he's that. Anyway, I think he's probably more, six four. I mean six five, six six. Raw. I like the what they did with the Kurt Angle Shawn Michaels thing. Yeah, that was well done, and it it, it gave you a little bit more depth to the feud. Instead I of it, you eliminated me at the Royal Rumble. Uh, you eliminated me at the Rumble. Uh. Angle looks so, I mean, bad compared to how he used to. When he first came in, he looked he was like a bright faced newcomer. He looks so weathered and, and just, yeah. you know, just... I don't agree with that. I think he looks fine. Oh, man. I, I think he... When he came in, I mean, before he started balding, he, he had that fresh face, uh, Wheaties look, and now he's, you know, he looks like... Lex Luger. Yeah. Yeah, Lex Luther. Luther. Luger, now, but... <laughs> I, I made the point on the forums. If we had Lex Luger and Kurt Angle on the line at the same time, would anybody be able to tell them apart? What they're speaking? You're right. You're actually right. 
they, they have the exact they have the exact same speaking patterns. They do. Um, and very similar voices too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I liked it. Sean cut a good promo. Uh, I'll tell you what, and I'll say, and I know you don't like this. When I see Shawn Michaels, hair in that stupid ponytail, wearing one of his shirts, with those wristbands and just the chaps, I'm thinking, Sean, go back to put the vest on, pull the hair all the way down, get the fingers with gloves, and yes, put the hat back on. Ah. Uh. Do it because that's Shawn Michaels. That's what, that's what I want to see. He is not. He has not had that ring attire for years. At least he's not cut his hair to horrible lengths like Jericho. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure that was forced upon Jericho. Why? Because they don't like people having long hair. He looked so much more marketable with long hair than yeah, he does. Yeah, I, I know, but nobody seems to realize that. They made me cut my hair. No. Right. You like my longer hair, but. I like the shorter hair. Yeah. You look, says I look like Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. It's all right, because I'm b b b Batista. La, 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 la. Stop, Stop it now. Um, I'm six you know what you know do? I'll beat you, know you up. Do? Ba, 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 you know what What should we do? What should we do? We should, you know how we have, like, <laughs> guys like Yandick and Stop it. <laughs> And and after and guys like kind of kind of the guests and we just talk wrestling with them. Why don't we see if we can get some Quinn Cider guys? Uh, I think we might be able to get Dave since we're now on the radio. That's what he told me the first time I asked him. He said once you're on the radio, I'll do it, but I won't Why do. Why don't we it. get Dave? Or you know who I like? You know who entertains me? Jess McGrath. Well, go ahead and email him. Let's email Jess McGrath. Let's do it right now because I I don't have internet capabilities. All right, well, we'll do it as soon as we're done with the recap. We'll email him, and we'll see if we can get him to come on for a recap segment. Uh, it seems like every time we put a show up these days, it's been a, d- a, been a twofer. It is. We are giving them double, you know, it's like double stuff for you. Yes, and, you know, we had two on the Nikolai and, and Hacksaw show. We had Francine on, which is two automatically. No, just kidding. Um, anybody get that? I don't know. I, I don't honestly get it. I mean, ba 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 batista Stop it now. He's um, six foot eight. He'll beat you up. Ba, 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 seriously, I don't think anyone likes that. Um, <laughs> Yay! But you know what pisses me off. Um, but uh, I got mailed. Yay! That's what I was talking about. Yes, we are the <laughs> professional radio show around here. Um, <laughs> on a side note, these these chicken. Why don't we go, don't we go back to the to the to the limey and the and the guy shouting retarded phrases? That, that that's a step in the right direction. Um, <laughs> on a side note, these these. When are we going to do the contest for the books? Because I feel like we've been pushing this forever, and we've never actually. It's going to be like Glacier. Yeah, these, these book contests are like Joe Gomez and Glacier. Right, we push them for so long that people stop caring. Yeah, so seriously, we got to do it. Like, All right, well, I'll tell you what. I got four copies of the Jimmy Hart book sitting next to me as we speak. I'll have copies of the Death of WCW book probably by the end of the week. Ooh, hey, can I make a question right now? What? And, like... Why don't you go ahead? Want me to make a question right now? and I'll Make a question? It. Sure. Put it up on the forums as well. Okay, but can I do it right here? Put the question, like, on here? Speak. I can. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me think of something. You keep talking. I'll think of the question. Ba 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 Batista. No, really, talk about things that are actually happening. I got mail. Yay! I hate you. What I what I do have mail, lady. <laughs> Sometimes I poop my pants. The credibility of the show is going down the tube as we speak. Yay! Um, all right, I got an idea. I, I mean, I got a question. <laughs> what? This is going to be an easy one, but this is just a very, <laughs> very easy question. Uh, who, and we'll see who posted this first on the forums, who was The Undertaker's first victim at a WrestleMania? This is so easy, but guess what? This is because we want to give you guys both chances. So, you know, like, the first first. Three people will get the opportunity to play for the book. I think I got. I think I know who it is. Who is it? Don't, I mean, don't don't say it, but telepathy me. Okay. Fantastic. You're right. Um, Brother. 
Yeah, uh, brother. Uh, do you think they're going to introduce anyone other than Hogan at the, uh... Well, I was watching this week when they announced it to see how it went. No, do you think they're going to interview, I mean, bring in anyone else? <laughs> Because, I mean, think about the poor staff that gets stuck after Hogan. Oh, he's going to have to be the last one. Yeah, unless they have, like, Brett. No, Brett, even Brett would be second to Hogan. No. Yeah. No, because Hogan's come back recently. You don't understand what would happen if Brett came back. Mm, Brett was never as big as Hogan. Yeah, yeah, but the fact is Hogan's come back. They've seen Hogan. Oh. Brett, the, the fact that he would never come back, that's, that's the, the crazy thing. The fans would go nuts for Brett. Oh, it's a crazy By the way, the, I saw this, like, VH1 stage moms thing with Hulk Hogan. His daughter, Burke Hogan, is so goofy. <laughs> uh, I'll stop you there because we're trying to get her for an interview with Hulk. No, I mean, she's cool, but she's just like, you know, she's like dancing and stuff. And, you know, but, but, does she sing, does she sing, blah, 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 Batista? No, she doesn't, James. That, that's, you know, that just gets funnier every time. You know who you're, you know who you're just as funny as? Does, does she have mail? Yay! I got mail! You know what? <laughs> I would hit you if I was near you. Um, <laughs> For those listening and can't see me, I'll just say I have tears in my eyes right now. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> I, I'm not laughing so hard. I am, I am slightly peeved. I will say that. <laughs> I am slightly peeved. Uh, what, what are we gonna talk about? Uh, let's talk about possible Roddy Piper. Shit, <laughs> who knows if it'll By the way, happen. if this show is going on in 2008, we'll be like, excuse me. Can we have Mr. Rowdy, Rowdy Piper on the show? Yeah, he'll call you next week. <sighs> That's 2008, so three years from now, we're apparently going to sound like 80-year-old men. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I really want to get Piper on soon. While well, he's still relevant. Yeah. I mean, he'll always be relevant, but while he's still alive, maybe. <laughs> Oh, hot rod. Uh, you're not the first one to say that to me today. Boomch. <laughs> you're laughing. Oh what? Well, yes, I am laughing. I have. I. I. I can't take any more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm in a good mood tonight. I don't know why. I'm not. These TV dinners are tremendous. I should go have one. Yes, I'm having the, ch the ones with the chicken strips one with the french fries in it. Impressive, eh? Aren't you lucky? Indeed, I am very lucky. Uh, meanwhile, you still haven't sent me my money. I did send you the money. Money, 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 money. You didn't get it yet? Money! Not yet. Hmm. How did you like my song? I, I wrote really that, you know. I don't really don't like anything that comes out of your mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? In the center of that, you know that Survivor Series like painting type thing they have. I painted it. Yes. I thought the guy in the center was Rhino and not the Undertaker. Yeah, good point. That's actually a really good point. Somebody did say that too. Why is Rhino on there? And yeah. then, and then they said, "Oh, that's the Undertaker." Yeah. Well, you By the way, did you see his commercial? Well, well, blow me down. That's what, that's what I said. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, the Dirty Harry. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't funny. No, it, I mean, it didn't even have any jokes in it. No, it wasn't funny. I mean, it just wasn't funny. I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but it wasn't funny. No, it wasn't supposed I, I mean, I can't imagine them thinking it would be funny. Yeah. The only cool thing was just seeing The Undertaker in that costume and seeing the set they had set up. <laughs> you know? Yes, sir. I mean, Undertaker looked creepy for some reason. Creepier than he normally does. But... You know, uh, uh I'm tired. <laughs> I just burped. Yay! I Shut just up. burped. Shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> Batista. Ba 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 Batista. He'll beat you up. He says, but he'll beat you up. Let's see what we got. We got requests on the forums. I'm just going to read this off from a new member who just told me who 
was the on the Kiss Spin the Bottle CD cover. That hot oh, little. Oh, he answered my question. I'm like, there's no way that could be happening. That hot tamale on the Kiss Spin the Bottle cover. Who is she? Uh, good question. Let me find her name again. I don't even think I can pronounce it. She's some Dutch chick. Dutch. Dutch. There's two things I can't stand: racial intolerance and the Dutch. Where's that from? Austin Powers Gold Member. Which I hate that movie, but that's a funny line. It's not a bad movie. You would say that, wouldn't you? It wasn't a bad movie. It was a comedy. What's wrong with it? You're a comedy. No, you're a comedy, brother. This is the worst recap we've ever done. <laughs> started out fantastic, and now we have just reached new lows. I think there might be something in this chicken TV dinner, because it's turned me into a complete moron. See, I'm trying to keep a semblance of order. But <laughs> okay. I'm... Yeah, that's a fair point. Let's see what her name is. I'm checking out her website right now. Seems to be Kira Agins. Or Agins. And she's quite a hottie. So check out the forums as I will thank Viper for posting it on the forums, and he's posted uh, quite a few messages, so welcome Viper to the forums. One of many to have just joined the forums in the past couple months. Okay, so, Kira Agents, check her out on the forums, Wrestling Epicenter forums. You can check that out by going to WrestlingEpicenter.com and clicking the forums link at the top of the page. Uh, we do have rules. We... We will allow you to bend the rules, but not quite break them. We ask you not to post nudity in the Divas area, uh, and if you do demand on doing so, we demand that adults only be at the beginning of your post, because we would like to run a family-oriented you know, site here. And if it is nudity, you must include one nude Trish Stratus poster per post. Do, uh, do any exist? Not real ones. <laughs> she is a beautiful woman. Indeed she is, old friend. <laughs> By the way, it's the funniest thing is watching, like, Royal Rumble and Survivor Series when Snitsky will come up to Heidenreich and he'll go, Heidenreich, I don't like caskets either. I like you. And he's like... Tell me that doesn't look like the intro to a gay porn video. Yeah. And then he says, I like you too, Gene. And then they stare off into each other's eyes. And then Snitsky says, with some foreshadowing in mind, I'll see you later. And then it goes, ouch, bow wow, bow wow. <laughs> and Snitsky skips off and dresses up in a tutu and wrestles Undertaker. Um... Yes, of course. Well, those red, t those red tights aren't that far away. Yeah, definitely not. What is he, like a, like a, like a flamboyant kickboxer? I'm Heidenreich, and I'm going to kick you. The Heidenreich Street Connection. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe he would be a good one to sing my Vitista theme song. We, we, we've killed this recap. This had the potential to be a really good recap because I was pissed. Her name is Kira. She is a showgirl. She's on the cover of the Kiss Tribute CD. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> what is in this chicken TV dinner? Because whatever it is... Same it's stuff that was in Sabu's steroid pill toy. <laughs> Thank you so much. You want me to get tumors in my kidneys? That's real nice. If you keep singing that petite song, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Sorry. You know what we got to do to lighten the mood at this point? If anyone's still listening, no one is expecting wrestling talk, so this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get, the return of Vince Russo. Vince, Vin, Vince Russo? Is Vince there? <laughs> yes, he's the one who gave me the chicken. All right, let me talk to him. And he didn't give me the, the, the chicken I'm eating. He gave me the live chicken, which okay. evidently is waking up the entire neighborhood. Um, okay. 
Vets? Yes, what would you like? Ah, ah, ah. No, 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 not that, Vince. Russo! Okay. All right, Eric, what do you want? Oh, Vince, just real quick. Um, I just wanted to talk to you. I'm holding the uh, Survivor Series New Year's Revolution and Royal Rumble DVDs in my hand right now. What do you think of those pages? You must have big hands, Eric. No. I mean... And yeah, you know what that means, Eric. But I can palm a basketball. And you know what that means, Eric. Well, I just want to know what you thought of those pay-per-views. I'll tell you what. Survivor Series 98 was my best angle. What what did you think of Survivor Series 2004? They're still doing Survivor Series? Yeah. You could have fooled me. There is life after Russo for the WWE Russo. No, there's not. Y yes, there is. Have you heard of this Batista guy? He's getting the world title shot at Mania. You mean ba 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 Batista? Yeah, yes, I do. He he's six foot eight, and he'll beat you up, Eric. So you know of Batista. Yes, I do. What do you think of him? I think Batista is tremendous. Would you have pushed him if you were running the company? I'd have pushed him so hard, he'd have fallen right off the cliff. <laughs> what, about, what about John Cena? Would you have pushed him? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of little white kids out there that like rap music, so I think I probably would have pushed John Cena. Uh, I just don't feel that Cena is going to reach that main event status in the eyes of those same fans that he plays to. What about Rhino? Rhino, I would have dress up in a tomato soup can <laughs> and he'd be the valet of Al Snow. <laughs> this is just so ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> let us Finish up this recap. If we're going to say let us, you better say let us pray, Eric. You know, I'm Christian now. Vince Russo Forgiven dot com. 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 Um, Are you making fun of my accent? Well, you know we've lost about eight viewers because of this recap. It's all about ratings. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. This is just ridiculous. Are you saying I'm ridiculous, Eric? Yes. You have been ridiculous this entire interview. <laughs> we have not stayed on topic at all. <laughs> okay. Fair point. That's a fair point. This is... Well, fans aren't trying to get him to stay on topic. He's eating poison chicken. All right, all right, all right. Listen, listen. I'm calm now. Give me a topic. Any topic. No, we're, we're ending this right now before we, we're, we're amputating the limb <laughs> before the gangrene reaches the rest of the body. We are we are closing off the infection right now. We were cutting our losses. We will be back next time after what the hell interview we do, and we will be much better, I promise. By the way, ladies, there's a new picture of me up on the profile. No, there's not. <laughs> yes, there, there is. I put it up? Uh, you, I sent it to you. But that doesn't mean I put it up. The My new... Zach Morris look. Oh, I didn't put that one up yet. I'll put it up next to your next to your, your old one, because I look, you think you look better. No. You look like CM Punk. <laughs> so, uh, did, have we had him on yet? CM Punk, no. Might as well get him on one day. Um... That's, that's, uh, so you're working the Ring of Honor show, and you're going to have a four-hour match against uh, the American Dragon. What do you think of this? And he'll tell me that he doesn't drink Pepsi. Okay, you know, just end this thing right now, because I'm not doing it. I said that because he says he's caffeine-free. He's caffeine-free, drug-free. And that's actually admirable, if it's true. Admirable. And you know what else? I'm talking about Kurt Angle. And in SmackDown vs. Raw, he says admirable. If you were still listening to this this part of the recap, 
I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. But <laughs> you, you. This is like this is like a hidden level in a video game because nobody's gonna get this far. They have turned us off long ago. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, we we talk about wrestling. I think a tenth. And then half the time you were going, yay, and the other stupid impression you do, and that Batista song. I, I needed you to balance me out for being pissed off. And I was like, let's get, well, let's get Jeff Mason and Jess McGrath on. You'd be like, yeah, after we're done, we can get on Jess McGrath. <laughs> you got to admit it. You're pissed off. I hope my internet is on after this because nothing will make me happy after this. Because, you know, the last, I want a really good recap one of these days. We've had some okay ones, but, and I was like, hey, this is going to be a good recap. People are going to like this. Hey, and then you're like, hey, hey. And then you're like, can we be, I mean, no, this is what James does. Here's my impression. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the TV's in right now. Uh, oh, what is in this chicken? What is in this chicken? It's making me go crazy. Yay! Yay, my email! Yay! I'm gonna make jokes about my bowel movement. Sing it! No, I'm not singing it. Sing I'll it. I'll tell you what, I listened to the Elite Insider Radio for No Way Out. They went off topic. They didn't go this bad. <laughs> and that's because they didn't want to talk about the show. They don't have the excuse that James Walsh is an idiot. Hey, watch it. I can fire you. You can fire me. Yeah, I won't fire you, don't worry. Uh, let's just go <laughs> ahead and end I this. I can pick the song. I, there's no even, there's not even a uh, <laughs> contest about this. Oh, you want to bet? Okay, yeah, uh, theoretically, yes, you can do the song. But if you have any, any soul, any, any bit of fairness in you, you will let me pick the song. And I'd like to f figure out why the hell Def Leppard's on tour with Brian Adams. You know, and I'd like to figure out how anyone can take you seriously on this after you just spent an entire thing singing a version of La Bamba talking about the <laughs> Nobody, they're going to be like, oh, oh, that's James. I mean, if they're still listening, because I, I honestly think there's not going to be a person listening to this. It's going to be like RSPH listening, and that's it. But you're, they're going to be like, oh, James Wall sings this on music. Hey, that's the guy who was doing the impressions of a retarded guy from Crank Yankers. And by the way, prove to me somebody emailed you and said that was funny, because nobody thinks that was funny. I, I happened to save all my emails from two years ago. Whatever. Is that a song, too? Yeah, it's lame. <laughs> I make fun of it, but, um... Well, I mean, everything that comes out today is lame.